Hello everyone, thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, I'll be talking about state management and how we can make our lives easier. Uh, my name is Piotrek, I've been a software developer since 2021. Uh, I'm, a I'm a big fan of functional programming and uh, in general programming uh, languages uh, and how they, how they work. Uh, in my spare time I like learning foreign languages, currently I'm learning Japanese and some other on the side. So it's not, it's not a big surprise that your app needs some kind of state uh, management. Uh, our library of choice is blocks. It, uh, block is very popular, uh, especially qubits, but doesn't really matter. Uh, this is the business layer, so we need uh, methods to fetch data, to update, to remove, stuff like this. Those are the, the methods that pretty much every app uh, has, uh, has and every app needs. Uh, but as your app grows, uh, your needs also grow. Uh, you need different blocks, different states. And sometimes these states can grow out of proportion and it can become really hard to, to deal with them. And as they grow, you start forgetting where they are, what they do. They are, un they are in general unwieldy. So let's say we have this kind of setting state. A lot of apps have some kind of configuration. Uh, like changing langu language, changing font size, changing dark mode, light mode, stuff like this. And you might want to gather all these in your settings state. Uh, but what do I want to do with the state? I have the state, how do I interact with it? Uh, the most basic uh, thing I, I want to do is to read the current value and to set a new value. So those are the two basic uh, methods everyone uh, always does, everyone always executes multiple times in their applications, in their widgets, in their blocks. Uh, basically, I want to get a value. For example, I want to know that my font size is right now 12. If I want to change it to something else, I want to set it to 16 and I know that it's 16. Pretty basic. Um, but besides all those uh, basic get and set uh, methods, what other functionality uh, do apps need? A lot of values in the apps are numbers. For example, font size, you can have some additional scaling, uh, some kind of uh, size, sizes, uh, delays, and numbers can be incremented, can be decremented. So I want to have those methods as well in my app. Just simply to, to make my life even easier. Uh, a lot of values are actually lists of other values. You, you may want to have some kind of a list of favorite books, a, a library of movies you want to watch, and those are lists. And very often you just want to manage one singular value of that list. So you don't really care what the list is all about. You just want to know that you want to change this one element. And I want to make this as easy as just telling the, the item at position three set it to something else. And I want my entire app to know about this change and to keep my state consistent and, and unified across the app. Uh, another type of values are booleans, on of values. If you have a dark mode, you might want to enable it, you might want to disable it. So I want to also be able to toggle some of the values. Uh, so to gather it all in one unified concept. It's called lenses. Uh, what are lenses? Where do they, co uh, where do they come from? Uh, my original idea for this package and for this uh, approach uh, was when I was at university learning Haskell and there, there's a great library called lenses. And my idea was that, well, why don't we do something similar in Dart to manage my state uh, in Dart with blocks? Uh, in general, the, the idea of lenses is that you, you can have a very complex object of your state, but if you want to change just one single value of that state, maybe nest it somewhere deeply, lenses allow you to peek into the, the object and grab this specific value out to be able to use it somewhere else. Uh, and in reverse, you, you can also modify the entire object uh, by just simply putting the new value somewhere deep inside the object. You, it can be nested in, in lists, in other objects, 
but the entire list will update. Uh, what other advantages uh, do these lenses have? Uh, if you want to uh, create your own uh, widgets that modify some values and manage uh, other values, uh, you have to provide a couple things. You have to know what the current value is, so you pass the parameter value. You want to be able to change the value, so you pass the, the callback on changed. If it's, a, for example, a slider, uh, because you want to create a font size uh, uh, control, uh, you may want to limit uh, the minimum value and the maximum uh, value so that the user has only a very specific uh, range to, to modify this value. So it, it's a very simple control, but you need four parameters and you, make, you have to make sure that they are unified, that they stay in, in check, that they, that they make sense. Uh, but here you have to pass them manually. So it's very easy to maybe forget to pass the minimum value or, those, or to swap them around or to get the value from something else. Uh, so the block lens library solves that by combining all those uh, values in one unified object. We, uh, I call it number lens that manages some kind of value. We don't really know, uh, we don't really have to know where it's coming from, but it, uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's an object that allows you to get the current value, it allows you to set the new value, and it can also have additional properties, for example, the bounds, so minimum, maximum value, and uh, as well the step if you want to change the granularity of those changes. So what's, what's really underneath? What, what is this class all about? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I want to get and set the value, and this is basically the cornerstone of this whole uh, library. Uh, it's a class that has two simple methods defined, and everything else uh, is built on top of that. We have a few helpers uh, that I also mentioned before. If you specifically want to manage a Boolean value, uh, we provide a, a toggle uh, so that you can actually uh, switch between values without having to first read the value and then write the, the new value. Uh, for managing numbers, uh, a co a common methods are going up, going down. If you want to use the, a specific step, you, you can also do that. Uh, another kind of maybe weirdly named class is enumlens. Uh, we probably, mo most of you probably know what enums are but it's not really about enums in the Dart sense. It's about values that can have one of few possible values. For example, the language in your app. You may want to localize your app in Polish, English, and German. So those are three values that the local in your app can have and everything else is an illegal state. So we want to prevent uh, setting this value to something that it's not supposed to be. So this is a, a helper that ensures that you, all, you only set the value that you can actually set. Uh, for, more, for more complex use cases, uh, we, have list we have a list lens that allows you to pick into the list and get, get the value at a specific index. Nothing really fancy, regular lists can do that. Uh, but it also provides uh, methods to update uh, the list. It creates an entire new list because uh, we might uh, we should uh, keep objects immutable uh, for block, so we create new lists uh, when you uh, modify them. Uh, but also, it allows you to peek even deeper into objects in that list, uh, so that uh, you you don't have to manually copy the copy the list, copy other other objects. It's all in just this one operator. Uh, so what for? Uh, those are uh, some of the examples of uh, controls that you can build very easily using those uh, lenses. Switches are a prime example because they are for toggling, uh, uh, for, for toggling settings. Um, scaling, like going up and down, these plus minus uh, buttons are for managing numbers, so it's only uh, logical that you, you would use a number lens. Uh, stuff like segmented uh, buttons or drop down is for an enum lens because it only allows you to select one of the few options. And if you have a list of objects like a list of users, a list of books, a list of favorites, 
Uh, and if you want to edit each of those values specifically and individually, uh, we have this list lens that allows you to modify each of the values. Okay, that maybe that's great, but it's all been just some kind of uh, an abstract class, an abstract cell, uh, some kind of, uh, we just put together in the column, how do I use that? Um, let's say, how do, I, how do we create a control for the font size? Uh, it's a common use case that we might want to have uh, the user increase the font size if they want to have their font bigger. So you add the value, the property to your state, and what now? Uh, this uh, this uh, library allows you to create this kind of uh, view into your qubit, into your state, uh, with setting minimum value, maximum value increments. And this and this one object, this font size object, uh, consolidates all these properties, all these values, all these methods into one one unified uh, uh, property that you can pass around your app and it will make sure that all the values stay consistent because that's really what, what, what's it all about. You don't have to care about manually creating a method to change the value. You don't have to manually then get from the state the specific uh, property. It's all in this one, uh, one place. And on the side of the UI, uh, this package provides a simple util using Flutter hooks. I love this li library, uh, by the way. And this one line is all it takes to allow your widget to get the block from the context, to subscribe uh, to, the, uh, to the block, to, to subscribe specifically for the only the, the changes in the value you want. And this final font size is the actual lens, so you can execute get, execute set, you can read the minimum value, the maximum uh, value, and no matter what you do, the value will stay consistent and the widget will update exactly when you want it. Uh, this is one of the main points uh, that I wanted this library to have, that it actually rebuilds your widget at exactly the right times because uh, usually um, it might be easy to forget that you shouldn't rebuild your widget when you change only one specific value in your state because, it, for example, it doesn't really matter because you don't actually use this value. But I've seen people very often, me myself, uh, just uh, subscribe to the entire uh, block without caring much for what it actually uh, means for performance. But here, the, uh, this uh, utility actually only changes when, when the value changes. It also uh, detects if it's a number, if it's a boolean, if it's a, lens, if it's a list and it allows to access those additional methods, increment, decrement, uh, the operator of indexing into the list, and so on. And another uh, feature is encapsulation. Let's call it that. Uh, it only allows you to change the property you actually, you actually took from the qubit, from, from, from the block, uh, so that it's, it's easy to separate where the value is coming from, because if you have a lens, you can only get and set this one value. It doesn't really matter if it's from a block, if it's from something somewhere else. You can just set and get, and, that, and uh, that's it. You don't need to worry about someone somewhere in your code uh, suddenly accessing your entire block and changing the changing state in a way that you didn't want them to. So what kind of states uh, this library can be used for? Uh, it's not always uh, it's, it's not always the best idea to use uh, to use uh, this package because it kind of provides a very specific way of accessing and modifying uh, the state so where where is it actually worth using it if you have a list of if you have a state with a lot of properties that should be separated from uh, uh, from uh, each other for example settings i already uh, previewed this class uh, before uh, it's it's a, for, for me a prime example, and this is basically where this library uh, stems from. Uh, I have a, in my project, I have a huge setting state with many properties, and I just wanted a very simple way of accessing each of the settings individually. 
So this is, uh, for me, a great example and a huge helper in my day-to-day -day coding. Another use case is for forms, actually for kind of simpler forms. It can be multi-step, but still uh, without any weird validation logic. Let's not go into that. Uh, but for forms, it's also a great idea because each of the field in the form actually modifies usually just one value on the form. So this is what the library is all about. If you have a text field, uh, you usually care about just changing one, one of the values. If you have a checkbox, it still changes one of the values. So this is also a good idea to, to use lenses with forms, simply to make your qubits easier, simpler and to make your widgets simpler. For, uh, up to this point, I've been talking about block. That's what this library is all about, almost. Um, but what if you don't use block? There are many other state management, uh, management libraries out there. And you might not want to suddenly migrate to block just to use one specific package. But don't worry, this package, the base of this package is completely agnostic. You can connect it to any state management library you want. Uh, Mobex, Riverpods, what have you. Uh, and even if you don't, don't want to connect it to state management in any way, you can still use uh, a class that basically bundles a getter and a setter. Uh, again, to pass around as this one unified pair and to cut down on boilerplate so that the widgets can have fewer properties. And inside those widgets, you can invoke them more easily. Boilerplate. We don't really like boilerplate, so how we can um, make our blocks even simpler? Uh, because what I showcased was basically uh, removing one boilerplate and replacing it with something else, which is still boilerplate. So how we can get rid of that altogether? Uh, this is kind of an experimental uh, part of, the, of this package, uh, and it's still very much work in progress, but I'm really excited about what it allows us to do. Uh, when, you, when your qubits grow, your method, you have to define new methods. You have to, even, even in block lenses, you have to define the new, each, each time you add the property, you have to define a new lens. It is boilerplate, it's tedious. If you might want to, uh, you might uh, forget accidentally, you might uh, change them around, you might uh, do something wrong. And we don't really want to add additional properties just to be able to use them somewhere else. Um, macros, which is a, an upcoming feature in Dart and, and Flutter, will make this much easier. You don't have to define anything yourself. You just have to add one, uh, one line above the qubit make, called make lenses. And each time you add the property to the state, it will automatically uh, generate an, an appropriate lens for your qubit. Actually taking into account if it's a Boolean, it will make it a Boolean lens so you can use toggle. If it's a number, it will define a number lens. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it, but it is a macro, so you don't even have to like do any build, uh, manually building. Uh, separately, it's all in the background, and it allows us to uh, use the use the qubit even simpler. And as you can see, there is no boilerplate. The qubit is just a simple class with no no else. And it is available for, for preview. Uh, we have a sub package block lens macros. If you want to live on the edge and try it out, I uh, encourage you. It's an, it's an amazing feature, and I'm really excited for what it brings to the ecosystem. Uh, if, you, if you want, I encourage you to, to try it out. It's available uh, on, on PUB. Uh, you can give us our, on GitHub, like us. And I'm excited to hear uh, what you think of this package. And um, that's basically it. If you want to try it out, if you want to uh, learn more, if you want to uh, discuss it, uh, I, I invite you to our booth, where you can also learn about other uh, packages uh, fr from Linkout. Uh, tr try them out. We have some demos. We have the great coffee. 
and uh, we, we, we also encourage you to, uh, uh, to come to our booth and uh, talk and uh, discover some other open source contributors. Thank you.